What's going on guys and welcome to who to sign for. Now in this series I'm giving you my recommendations on what players to sign for a specific team in career mode but before we go on I will say that the signings you'll see aren't designed to be realistic and I can't stress that enough and the player ratings and potentials of the players may vary depending on what database you're using and how they perform for you during the season. Obviously you don't have to follow the tips, this is really just a set of guidelines to give you a hand if you're stuck for ideas and want some suggestions on what players you could sign for a certain club. This is mainly a that those who are out there who may be new to the game I just need a little bit of advice or for those who are out there who just want a few recommendations on what players to sign for a team that you may be using in career mode this year so yes in today's episode of WTSF we are going to take a look at Napoli that's right Napoli of the Serie A in Italy who started with a very big transfer budget after wage budget alteration of around 60 to 65 million pounds perhaps even more than that if you want to be frugal with your contracts now originally it's a 44 million pounds but as I always say the wage budgets you're given at the start of every single career mode are always very generous. You're looking at a budget of over £60 million in the first season. It's a four and a half star team, and you can see the objectives in the first season with Napoli. You've got to reach the final of the Coppa Italia, finish in the top four in the Serie A, and reach the semi final of the Champions League. And when you take a look at this team right here as well, I've got to say, Napoli would be a really fun team to do a career mode with because they've got they've got like the perfect mixture of a challenge. But also good young talent with some aging players as well. They're in the Champions League. They start off in Europe's premier competition. They need to dethrone Juventus in the Serie A, who of course, as we know, dominate Italian football. So they've still got room to improve on. And they've got a decent budget to start off with as well. The only thing that's missing from Napoli in the first season is a real stadium. Unfortunately, the Stadio San Paolo is not in FIFA 20, which is a real shame because it's a very atmospheric ground. But um, either way, it's, it's a fun team. And I would definitely say I'd, I'd recommend Napoli as a, a side for you guys to try out in Korea. But if you're stuck for ideas on a new project, because again, with Napoli, it's going to take some time before you become a major dominant European side. But you start off in the Champions League, you got free real kits. And uh, again, the only thing you're really missing is the real stadium. There's a couple of decent young talent in there as well. Obviously, Fabian is one of the best young midfielders in this year's FIFA. 83 rated, but I believe, grows to 90. And uh, only two players are the deals that come at the end of the year as well. Those are Dries Mertens and also Jose Callahan as well. So yeah, Napoli, I'll definitely recommend for a career mode in FIFA 20. So as I run you through their four and a half star team, you will notice the first thing is that there's a lot of players that are currently loaned out for the, uh, from the club. And more on that in a moment. And as I alluded to a moment ago, they've got two players out of contract. Those are Dries Mertens and Jose Callahan, who are both very highly rated. Mertens, the 87 rated Belgian centre forward, and Callahan, the 84 rated right sided player. Uh, either of which I would say you could give new contracts to if you wish to do so, because again, they're both very highly rated and two of your highest rated players in the side however due to the fact that in FIFA career mode players start to show signs of deterioration as soon as they hit 30 my personal recommendation will be to cash in on them as soon as possible and get as much money as possible as opposed to giving them new contracts because as the season goes on their valuation is going to drop and their stats are going to decline as well so they're two very good players they'll be in the first 11 right from the very first season but again due to the fact that EA think once a player turns 30 they're officially rubbish I would recommend selling them and getting some uh, some money for them in the very first season. That's what we do with Callahan here as we sell him for 24 million to Chelsea. So uh, yeah, Napoli starting off with a four and a half star budget. And again, we're only two players that are contract coming in the first season as well. You saw the players that are put on the transfer list there. Most of the players are in their 30s or approaching their 30s and don't have much more room, if any more room to grow. So I'd recommend starting a transition with Napoli in the first season and replacing the older senior players and bringing in the younger replacements. And my number one target for a new uh, player to sign for a Napoli career mode would be a new striker. And it will be this guy right here. I cannot recommend this guy highly enough in FIFA. It is Timo Werner of RB Leipzig. Now, if you play on the original database, Werner has his contract upcoming at the end of the season. You can get him for around his valuation, which at the time is around £35 million. But in the newer patches, he's uh, he's had a, uh, a contract extension and therefore you're most likely going to be paying around £70 to £80 million to get hold of him. So you'll be paying most of, if not your entire budget, after you've made the sale of Callahan or Dries Mertens. In this case, it was Callahan, but Timo Werner is the ideal striker for a Napoli career mode. Now, you might sit there and say, why would you bother signing Werner when you've got Milik on the bench and a Polish striker? is still very young right now in his early to mid-20s. Well, Werner is younger than Milik, he is better than Milik and he has higher potential than Milik as well. And his key stats are absolutely 
Perfect. 93 acceleration, 91 sprint speed, so he's a rapid player. He's got a clinical finish with high medium work rates, a four-star weak foot, and some really good ball control and dribbling stats as well. Timo Werner is your number one target for the striker role, and again, whilst he will cost you most likely your entire budget to get him, he is your replacement and your successor for Dries Mertens. And again, you can use Milik if you'd like to do so, but what you've got to keep in mind with Milik is he's also got the injury-prone tag as well, so you're going to need another striker in the Napoli side due to the fact that Fernando Llorente is in his 30s right now and I definitely would recommend Werner more than any other striker as your number one target for the new man up top. He's got 90 potential so he grows to become one of the best players, oh, sorry 89 potential with dynamic potential and training he can get into the 90s which means he can become one of the very best players in football when it's all said and done in your career mode. I couldn't recommend Timo Werner higher. But to add for more sales with Napoli you saw us sell Carzinis a third choice goalkeeper and also Mario Rui gets sold here for 13 million now you can sell Gulam if you prefer to do so Mario Rui and Gulam are both left backs who are the same rating and also the same age as well but I'd recommend selling Rui just because Gulam is taller he's been at the club for longer and he's got some traits as well and also after the sale of Callahan, we did sell Dries Mertens as well. Funny enough, Chelsea bought both of our aging players. Uh, Mertens went for 40 million to Stamford Bridge. Uh, Callahan went for 24 million. So Chelsea bought both of our senior players there. And after the sale of Dries Mertens, I had enough money to bring in my second target with Napoli. And my second target would be a new left back. After you sold one of Mario Rui or Gulam, it's totally up to you who you'd prefer to sell. My recommendation would be to sell Mario Rui. If you'd rather sell Gulam, that's, uh, that's okay as well. My number one target for a new left back with Napoli would be one of these three guys right here. Jose Gaia, the Spaniard of Valencia, Ben Chirwell, the English left back of Leicester City, or Zinchenko, the 22-year-old left back that currently plays for Manchester City. Gaia is the highest rated out of the three at 81 overall, although he is the oldest of the three at 24, and he's most likely going to cost you the most amount of money as he's got the highest potential at 86, or the joint highest potential at 86. But either Chilwell or Zinchenko would be good plan Bs if you will. Chilwell, you're probably going to pay around 5 mil over his valuation. We paid 20 million to get him. And Zinchenko, you're probably going to be paying around 17 million. So Zinchenko or Chilwell are the cheaper options. They are lower rated than Jose Gaia. But all three of these players are around the same age, around the same rating, and have around the same potential as well. Really, it's just whichever one takes your fancy. Gaia is going to cost the most amount of money. Chilwell and Zinchenko will cost you around the same fee. They're both the same age at 22 years old. However, Chilwell starts off one rating higher because Zinchenko has one better rating for potential. Chilwell's potential is 85, Zinchenko's is 86, but really, they're very like-for-like -like players with the same age and, uh, again, around the same overall potential as well. It's just really up to you, personal preference, whichever deal you can make the best one value for money. So, we signed Chilwell uh, for £20 million, so he's got high, high work rates. I'm, I'm such a huge fan of this guy in real life. I've sung his praises so many times. He's a really, really exceptional young left-back, and again, he's six years younger than Gulam and Mario Rui, so once you've sold one of these two, those two players right there you're getting a player that's six years younger and also one rating higher with obviously more potential as well so it just makes sense to improve that left back role so Chill became our second signing after Timo Werner and as I alluded to a few minutes ago there the one thing you might notice with Napoli is they've got tons of players that are currently loaned out from the club right now and I always recommend this when you're doing a career mode with a side that have got loads of players that are currently loaned out that have what you what I would call resale value recall them from their loan spells because they'll probably cost you a few hundred thousand pounds to recall them but you can put them on the transfer list straight away as so long as they've not recently joined the club in your first season and you can sell them for a bigger fee whereas right now all they're doing for you out on loan is just playing match experience where for players that are in their late 20s you don't need them to get first team football as they're not going to grow any more ratings and the club is paying their wages there's very little benefit to keeping those players out on loan right now when you can recall them for a small fee and sell them on for a big profit. Like right here with Simon Verdi, where you call the 27-year-old centre forward and at 78 rated, he could have a place to play on your team. You could either have him on the bench or in your reserves to add squad depth or you can sell him for what we did for £12.25 million to the Mestaya at Valencia. We did the same with Inglese. We recalled him from his loan spell at Palmer, I think it was, and sold him uh, in the second time of asking. He rejected the first move to Porto. We sold him in the second time of asking 
And as you can see here, we recalled these players, two centre-backs and two strikers, for around, what, £2 million? Maybe just over £2 million? And we sold Verdi for 12.25 mil. It's just a very easy way of getting more money in career mode without needing to sell players you currently have in your squad right now at your disposal that aren't out on loan. If you recall the players that are loaned out, put them on a transfer list straight away, I guarantee in the first transfer window, you're more likely than not to get a bid for them, so long as they've not just recently join the club in this first season and you'll be able to make a big profit as opposed to them staying out on loan and not really doing anything for you. It's just far more beneficial to recall the players, transfer list them and negotiate a sale and make some money that way. It's one of the easiest ways to get more money in career mode. When you join a club and you notice they've got players that are currently loaned out right now and have resale value, recall them. I know it'll cost you a little bit amount of money but trust me you'll make that money back and then a lot more on top of that once you negotiate the sale for them. Uh, we also uh, gave Meret a new contract there as well. Watch out for Alex Moret in the first season with Napoli as well. One of the first things you should do, which I totally forgot to do at the start, is give him a new contract. Alex Moret is one of the better young goalkeepers in the game. I believe he's got 85 potential, so can become your number one when it's all said and done. And it's probably going to be starting number one ahead of David Ospina, the Colombian, in the first season, as he might be one rating lower, but is several years younger. He has a very low, re a low release clause, around £24 million. Pounds. Delegate a renewal for him, remove that release clause, make sure he gets tied down and stays here. But as you, say here, as you see here, we sell Tonelli, Kirikes and Inglese. And again, all three of these players go. Inglese goes for £8.7 million pounds to Ajax. Kirikes goes for 7.5 mil. And Tonelli goes to Athletic Bilbao for 7.25 mil. So we've just made around £23 million pounds for those three players there that we just recalled from their loan spells. £23 million pounds has just been added to our budget. Whereas if we kept them out on loan, we wouldn't have had the money. Again, that's the first thing you guys need to notice when you join a new team and uh, you start a new career mode. When you see that a club's got several players out on loan that have got resale value, but are in their late 20s right now, and you don't plan to use them when they come back to you after the season, recall them. It will cost you a small amount of money, but the amount of money you can make for selling them far exceeds the amount of money you've got to pay for recalling them. Trust me, it's a really wise thing to do. But uh, following the sales there, and some more you saw prior to those three, we did decide to go after a new signing with Napoli, and my third of four signings I would make in this career mode was a new winger and I would definitely recommend a replacement for Jose Callahan once you sold him as well. You've got Mertens a replacement in Timo Werner. I'd recommend a replacement for Callahan in the first season. You can use Lozano, a very talented winger, but Mikel Oyarzabal or Ousmane Dembele from Barcelona would be two absolutely fabulous options right now playing in La Liga. They're both the same age, they've both got the same rating, but Dembele has one rating higher for potential than Oyarzabal, but either player you pick up here would be really, really good. They're both players that operate best when cutting in and shooting on their preferred feet as inside forwards. Then has got a five-star skill move rating and a five-star weak foot as well. You're probably going to pay around the same fee for both of them. We negotiated a £45 million with both Sociedad and Barcelona as well. And we signed Dembele again for £45 million. And the benefit with Dembele as well is that he will take a big pay cut too. So you can sign him for around hundred to £110,000 a week on a five-year deal. So when he's growing to hit around almost 90 overall, you still won't need to give him a new big bumper contract. So either Dembele or Yaya's about, really the choice is yours. Either of which will be fabulous players to replace Jose Callahan. It's totally up to you. But again, I went for Dembele just because again, he's got five star skill moves and a five star weak foot as well. The Holy Grail five star, five star. It's a very rare sight on a player in FIFA career mode, but it's really cool with high medium work rates and a flair trade as well. I think he's just a little bit better than Oyarzabal in the game. Plus, he's got 90 potential as opposed to Oyarzabal's 89. But again, really, it's personal choice. It's totally up to you. But that front three now of Insigne, Werner, and Dembele, all the players in their 20s, with Werner and Dembele in their early 20s, I mean, that right there is a deadly front trio and a fantastic attack you've now got for your first season season at the Stadio San Paolo. But uh, once again, I did some more recalling and transfer listing here. I recalled Sepe, who's currently out on loan, uh, Rahmani uh, as well. And uh, I think I also, I think I recalled someone else as well. I can't remember who it was. Oh, yeah, Shitaretti, there we go, who's currently on loan at Empoli right now. Uh, we recalled him too and put these guys on the transfer list as well. You might have noticed I uh, put Luperto on the transfer list too. He's actually a decent centre-back and I, I wouldn't recommend selling Luperto. Personally, I'd rather keep him here. He's only 22 years old. 
73 rated, and he's got 80 potential as well. So he's a good squad centre half, but the reason I decided to sell him is because I wanted to make one more final signing with this Napoli side, and I was basically had a race against the clock here to make sure I could do this before transfer deadline day slams shut. So he was an unfortunate casualty of my desperate bid to raise enough money to sign one more final player for his Napoli side. So again, Luperto, he's a decent centre half. He's only 22 years old. He'll grow quietly in the reserves. He won't complain about a lack of game time. And again, with 80 potential, with dynamic potential in training, could get into the low 80s. Personally, I'd say keep him in the first season, but again, I just needed to sell him to raise a bit of cash. We sold him to uh, Fenerbahce for £5.6 million, and uh, we also sold Sepe for £6.5 million as well to Eddie Howes Bournemouth. And the final sale I negotiated was Chicharetti coming back from his loan spell. We sold him to Marseille for £7.5 million. So again, this is why you recall those players, because I wouldn't have been able to afford one final signing had I not done this. And this is quite interesting too, but I got a bid here for Kevin Malquit who is our uh, French right back here, 28 years old, 78 rated, who can also play right mid. We accepted a bid from Porto, but unfortunately after the sale of Chicharetti, it was now transfer deadline day, and I didn't have enough time to make the sale and uh, watch it go through. So in the end, as you can see here, I decided to go after my final transfer target with our Napoli side. I wanted to get Nelson Semedo of Barcelona as my first choice. Unfortunately, he had moved on to Roma in this career mode. My second choice was Klosterman. He would joined Atletico Madrid, so I couldn't sign either of my first two choice my third choice was the most expensive of the lot and that's why I was selling so many players towards the end of this transfer window here just so I could afford the new right back which I would recommend my personal recommendation for a new right back would be Nelson Semedo 82 rated with 85 percent I think it is at Barcelona my second choice would be Klosterman at RB Leipzig unfortunately both of those players have moved on to new clubs Roma and Athletic Madrid respectively but the player I did sign in the end was Ricardo Pereira from Leicester he's the most expensive of the three but he is the highest rated of the trio at 84 overall we had to spend basically all of the remaining budget to get him which is 38 million pounds plus Kevin Malquit the guy that we were going to sell to Porto in the end it swapped him to uh, to King Power Stadium instead but Ricardo Pereira he's the best of the three you probably won't have enough money to bring him in unless you do what I did and make some big sacrifice towards the end of the transfer window but he'd be an amazing option as with Klosterman as with Nelson Semedo as a uh, as a step up on Di Lorenzo and Heisage the Albanian as well whilst also being the same age as High Sage, but better in basically every single area. And he's got a plus two growth as well, which means he grows to 86 at his peak. And again, with dynamic potential and player training, you could get him in to the high 80s. So yeah, Pereira was my fourth and final signing. I was in a race against the clock. Normally, I stopped doing my business uh, before the first game of the season. But in this one, I wanted to make sure I did make that final signing, which was going to be uh, Ricardo Pereira. So I went over the first game of the season, which is against Fiorentina, and got through to transfer deadline day but uh, the, the squad was done we made our four signings Pereira and Chilwell the new fullbacks in from Leicester City and our two new boys up top Timo Werner the new striker to replace Mertens and of course our new right winger in Dembele replacing Jose Callahan as well so as you can see in the end we sold 11 players 11 players we had a real cull here with Napoli but again as you'll see most of the players are either in their 30s or in their late 20s as we replace the older players and begin the transition here Luperta was the only young player getting sold and again I just needed to do that to raise the cash. We sold 11 players for 136.5 mil, signed four players for 178.5 mil, so it was a whopping transfer fee in the end for Napoli, 178.5 mil and a net loss of 42 million pounds. The question was though, could this Napoli squad with a lack of squad depth, admittedly so, that's the one thing I didn't do very well in this transfer window, manage to complete those objectives of finishing in the top four, reaching the cup final and reaching the semis of the Champions League as well? Well, as you could see... We did hit our league objective and look how unlucky we were. We were two points beyond Juventus come the end of our first season. In the first season, we're not supposed to dethrone Juventus. We're only supposed to finish in the top four. We did that pretty comfortably by 10 points in the end, clear of Roma in fifth place. But two points and one win away from being crowned Serie A champions. A fantastic debut year in the Serie A at the Stadio San Paolo for Napoli there. Just two points beyond the eventual winners, Juve. And we 
hit our cup objective as well. We reached a final in this as well before losing to Juve by four goals to one. So a domestic double for Cristiano Ronaldo's Juventus. But again, to reach the, uh, reach the final and also finish in the top four of the Serie A, very impressive indeed. But the one disappointment was in Europe. Unfortunately, we failed this objective quite badly. We didn't reach semi-finals like we were asked to do so. In fact, we were knocked out in the round of 16. We managed to make it for our group stage, but we were absolutely thrashed by Pep Guardiola's Manchester City. I always show this. I, I never hide things from you in these Who to Sign For episodes. I never hide things for you, even if we underperform. And in this one, we got absolutely destroyed. We lost 3-0 in the second leg and 6-1 over two legs. So yeah, it was, a, it was a very, very poor first season in Europe for Napoli, getting dumped out in a round of 16 and humiliated by Man City. But domestically, you have to say, it was a sublime season. Yes, there was no silver in the cabinet. We weren't asked to win silver in the first season. We just had to reach the final of the Coppa Italia, which we did, and we were just two points away from dethroning Juventus in the Serie A, finishing runners-up in our first league campaign at the Stadio San Paolo as well. So in the end, it was a really successful first season. We were replaced the old players we sold a lot of Deadwood players here as well and the players we brought in all played really strong roles in the first team Ben Chilwell and Ricardo Pereira both scored the same amount of goals and got the same amount of assists in the first season as our new fullback pairing from Leicester City settled into life in the Serie A very strongly indeed and as for our new boys up top Dembele scored 13 goals and got six assists in 32 Serie A games growing two ratings to 85 overall at just 23 years old this guy is on his path to reaching 90 overall after a very strong and impressive first season in the Serie A and as for Timo Werner replacing Dries Mertens up top he also had a really strong season in the first year at the Stadio San Paolo where as you can see he managed to score a total of 22 goals all in all five in five in the Coppa Italia as well on our way to reach the final and 17 in 38 in the Serie A averaging almost one every two games and he grew a rating to 87 overall and just 24 years old he has got plenty more years of being your main out-and-out -out goal threat for Napoli. So yeah, in the end, it was a very successful first season domestically. Yes, in Europe, we failed domestically, hit both our objectives, and again, you look at the players you brought in, Chilwell and Pereira, both growing a couple of ratings, uh, sorry, Chilwell grew two ratings, Pereira didn't grow one at all, but then Bele grew two ratings, Werner grew one, and they all had solid, impressive first season, all averaging over a 7.1 in their first season at the Stadio San Paolo. So all in all, Europe, yes, was a failure, but domestically, we laid down the groundwork in our, uh, groundwork in our first season, and the one thing I'd probably do differently if I could do this again was add a bit more squad depth to the team. But for the most part, the four new signers coming in, all in their early to mid-twenties, all hitting the ground running early. And we've shown you events in our first season. Their dominance might be coming to an end in the very near future. But that was today's episode of Who to Sign For, guys. A big fan for watching video. enjoyed it. And if you did enjoy today's episode, then please do drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. And I'll see you for the next episode of Who to Sign For very soon.